Hi everyone, it's me Grace. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how I got an A star in A level physics. So if you watched my results day video, you would know that I got an A star in A level physics and actually a quite strong one for that matter. The grade boundary for AQA physics was 167 out of 250, which to be honest is quite low um, because I think everyone really struggled with the papers this year, but I got 196 out of 250 so I was quite well into that um, A star grade boundary and I'm so proud of this it's such a big accomplishment for me because A level physics is really difficult and it caused me a lot of stress you know I struggled with it a lot but I still managed to get an A star and I know a lot of people struggle with it so I wanted to give you some tips if you're about to do A level physics maybe you're considering doing it or you're already doing it and you're struggling and you want to get an A star here is how I did it. I just want to say I'm not one of those people who was really good at A-level physics and just it kind of came to them like no that definitely wasn't me. Before I started it I was really scared and I watched so many of these videos saying that it was going to be so hard. On the first day I went in that lesson and it was hard and I was considering dropping it literally but I was like I was warned about this you know how can I drop it now and I'm glad I did it because I ended up getting an A-star. So my first tip for A-level physics is to really make sure that you deeply understand the content. Physics is not one of those A-levels that you can just get by by memorizing stuff. It's really all about application. And if you don't understand it, you definitely won't be able to get a good grade. So ask lots of questions in class. I asked so many questions in class. And to be honest, I was a bit embarrassed. I did feel kind of bad because no one was really asking these questions. You know, when I would ask questions, like people would look at me and I was one of the few girls in my class. We had a large class and, there were, and it was mostly boys in it, right? So they would all look at me. I felt like I was making us girls look stupid. But when it came to the test, the assessments, guess who came at the top? Like, guess who was in the top three? Me. Everyone who was looking at me, no, everyone who didn't ask questions, I perform better than them. So remember, it's you and you alone in that exam. Don't keep your questions in because you're scared of looking stupid because at the end of the day, those people are not sitting your exams for you. So ask all the questions that you need, no matter how basic, no matter how fundamental, it's paramount that you understand the content. In the event where your teacher isn't that good, which to be honest, like in your 12, my, teacher, my teachers weren't really that good. And in year 13, sometimes like I would ask questions and I would still be confused. So what I would do is go on YouTube and find sources. So Science Shorts was really good. He has like videos just like explaining whole topics. He does it very well. He's very concise. A Level Physics Online is also kind of good. I, don't, I didn't use him that much, but I did use him sometimes and he was useful. These are A-level YouTubers, right? But I also think there's value in watching YouTubers who don't make videos for A-level because at the end of the day, your goal is to understand the physics. Like I remember when we first started doing waves, like diffraction, interference, I just didn't get it at all. And so I actually watched a video on Khan Academy, um, like on YouTube, and it was so helpful. It just cleared it up for me. He explained it so, like superposition, he explained it like so clearly. And I before that, I'd watched A-level videos, but it, they were just giving me facts and just saying like stuff that I needed to write down. But Khan Academy was actually explaining it. So just watch physics videos, Phys physics crash course on YouTube, Khan Academy, like those videos are also really good. So after I've understood the content, the next thing I would do was to go and write flashcards because you do need to memorize it. Like there is some memorization. There are some questions that will just be like, describe the formation of a stationary wave three marks like you just you need to know what to write for that so i used flashcards to memorize that i used anki anki is really good it's a digital flashcard system and basically it's like spaced repetition so it times when to show you the flashcards so i would do my anki every single day and it would show me the ones that i was getting wrong the ones that i was about to forget that's what anki was showing me so it was putting all the stuff into my long-term memory there are some topics in physics like particles that you just need to memorize stuff. So Anki was really good for that. So then after typing up um, the flashcards, I would then do questions. So I would advise you to do practice questions after, straight after you've done the topic in class. This is something that I wasn't, that I didn't really do that well. I did do it, but I wasn't the best at it. Like for example, in our end of year 12 exams, I realized that I didn't know mechanics because my teacher wasn't really that good with it and I didn't do questions. Um, 
So I had to literally, like, I was studying like eight hours a day and I was just like cramming mechanics at the end of year 12. So that, like, to save yourself the stress, just do the questions after you do the topics in class. And yeah, so do the questions, try not to look at your notes when you do them, just do them from memory. So that will help you to, that will help it stick. And then see the questions that you get wrong. If you get something wrong and you wrote what was in your flashcard, make sure to go back to your flashcard and change it and write what's in the mark scheme. Also, if there was a question where it was like you simply didn't know, like you just didn't know, obviously make sure you add that to your flashcards. And any like really difficult questions, like funny wordings that you just got a bit confused on, add that to your flashcards because they like to, sometimes the questions are quite similar or at least it's similar principles. I heard some people in my year would just do questions. They would need, they would just mark it. They wouldn't even write the correction. They would just mark it and that was it. There's no point in doing that. The whole point of the, doing the questions is to learn from them. So do them, mark them, write the corrections and change your notes, change your flashcards um, so that you have what the mark scheme wants you to say. Because sometimes with physics, it can get like your answers might get a bit wordy, like at least for me my answers sometimes would get a bit wordy, a bit waffly. Like I just I just wrote things in a roundabout way. I didn't say it the way the mark scheme wanted me to say it. So it's important to have that down. Some questions are like mathematical, like calculation based. And if you got like a question like that wrong, like let's say a five mark question, mechanics question, you got it wrong, right? I, what I would do is I would save the question. So I use an iPad, but I guess if you use paper, just write down, have a little notebook and write down questions that you need to come back to. And after a few days or even weeks, come back to the question. After you've obviously understood how to do it, come back to it and try it again. So that you've kind of forgotten the solution. But then again, you should be able to do it because you know how to do it now. So redoing questions was very important because sometimes I would come back to it the second time around and I would realize, actually, I didn't fully learn this and I would do it again. So yeah, redoing questions is also very important. Little one marker, two markers that I got wrong, I wouldn't redo them. I would just type them on my flashcards. But bigger mark questions, I would make sure to redo them. So yeah, physics is all about practice, practice, practice. But remember, you have to understand and know the content first because if you don't understand it deeply, you won't be able to attempt the questions. That's just the way they're designed. So make sure you understand it. Memorize the things that you need to memorize and then keep practicing. Because sometimes you can be in a situation where you know the content, but you look at the question and you still don't know what to do. Trust me, I know that feeling very well, but that will come with practice. Like you'll be able to know what the kind of the skills and techniques that you need to apply when you do tons and tons of questions. So for example, in preparation for my A-level, I did all the AS papers even though i had done them in year 12 i did them again in year 13 because obviously it had been like a whole year i did all the as papers i did all the a level papers i even did papers from other exam boards because you know the physics is still physics right and if i didn't get the wording right i wouldn't stress too much because i know that different exam boards have different wordings but yeah i would do i did aqa so i did like cie papers they were quite similar to aqa i think um ocr papers as well. I didn't do too many other exam board papers because I still had plenty of AQA ones to do, but still I did do some other exam board ones. And yeah, like I just made sure I found my teachers after school whenever I did a question and I didn't understand how to do it. I sent it to my friend who applied for physics at uni. I found my teacher. I was very proactive. Like don't just sit back, like be proactive and put in the work. Like physics requires a lot of work, you know, but as long as you put it in, like you should be fine. Also something I want to mention as well is mindset. I think mindset is very important as well because, you know, I went into my exams and I felt like I can do this. You know, I feel like if you don't believe you can do it, then that's going to really affect you in the exam. Especially because some physics questions are not very straightforward. You kind of have to think outside the box. If you've already come into the exam and you said like, okay, I'm not going to be able to do this. How are you going to then think outside the box when you've already told yourself that you won't be able to come up with the answer? So it's very important to just write and think and believe that, that, that you know the content well enough that you can think of the right answer. Because a lot of the times for me in my exams, I would come out of them and I would feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I did. I was just waffling. I don't know what I was writing. I was just writing anything. But what I what I had written was correct. Why was it correct? Because I knew the content, because I would put in the time to understanding it and doing questions. So in the exam, I might not have been 100% sure, but I kind of had that innate, I won't say innate ability, but because like 
I have done all the work. Like that will shine through. That will come through for you in the exam, even when you're not sure. Those questions that you did weeks ago, months ago, that knowledge, them things that you learned, it will come through in the exam. I need to just believe that it will. So yeah, I ended up getting an A star in physics and I was actually, I was a bit worried for physics. Like I only really needed an A. I was praying for an A, but I ended up getting an A star. And I think you can too. Trust me, physics is definitely a roller coaster. It's not an easy A level. I mean, no A levels are really easy. But one thing about physics is I think that the content is really interesting. Like I did, I did genuinely enjoy it. Like I think like astrophysics, um, what else was quite good? Like I find, I found like fields and stuff like gravitational fields. I feel like it's kind of interesting, like learning about like planets and stuff like that. It's really interesting. And that kind of, I think motivated me a bit. So if you're really struggling with physics, try and look at the beauty, try and appreciate like what you're actually learning. You're actually learning how the universe works. Like why, if you drop an apple, if you, if you let go of an apple, it will drop. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's kind of cool. So kind of appreciate that. It can become easy to just get bogged down and like, oh my gosh, this is so hard, this is so hard. But if you put in the work, you know, you and physics can become good friends. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below, are you doing physics? Are you struggling with it? Are you enjoying it? Do you want to do it? Just let me know if you have any other questions, if there's anything that I maybe missed that you want me to answer, comment down below. Share this video with your friends, people who are doing physics, people who want to do physics. And also subscribe to my channel for more academic content and university content and just tons of more content. So yeah, make sure you subscribe. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.